my name is Max Spooner. We are SMC Motor Group. This is a whiteboard that I stole from the manager's office and this is how to buy an electric car 101. So next up we're going to talk about KW and KWH or to give them their proper names kilowatts and kilowatt hours. Now kilowatts is typically what the Europeans would use to measure power. Uh, for us it would be horsepower. So typically one kilowatt would be 1.37 horsepower. Think of it as a metric and imperial type scenario here. So the idea is if a car has 100 kilowatts of power then it would have 137 horsepower, much like the Renault Zoe. Kilowatt hour on the other hand is how much power is used over a period of time, so in this case an hour. Now typically we would use this to work out the capacity of a battery. So think of the kilowatt hour as how big a fuel tank is. So the bigger the tank the bigger the range in theory but if you've got a particularly powerful battery you're going to need a big tank to go that extra mileage so if you had say a car that could produce um, I don't know a thousand kilowatts yet could only do a range of about 100 miles then it would probably have a very small battery but if it had something like a 77 kilowatt hour battery then it would probably be better for 200 miles for example so next up let's talk about charging. Now charging an electrified car is not the same as putting fuel in, in a normal engine car. Uh, whereas with an engine car it's, it's fuel, it's one speed and that's it, you, you fill up, you're done in a matter of minutes. With electrified cars it's a bit more complicated than that and it, the speed that you can charge depends on where you are as does the cost. So allow me to explain. So if we start with your, your house, put some windows in there, uh, there you go, and uh, that's our house, uh, it doesn't have a downstairs, it's, um, it's a very strange property, um, but let's say you have a wall box fitted to your house with a charge lead. So typically you would have between three kilowatts up to about 11 kilowatts which is what you can expect on single phase electrics if you were at say the supermarket so let's draw superstore call it food door there right so say you were at the supermarket typically you will find chargers that can go from about 7 kilowatts up to about 22 kilowatts. Now these kind of charges are good if you just want a quick top up while you're doing shopping or you're out and about. So supermarkets, shopping centres, places like that. Um, now the next one up from that would be your motorway services. So let's draw motorway services. Uh, you'll probably have a particular well-known fast food chain so let's say you're at the services uh, and you're, you're probably going to use the uh, you're probably going to use the toilets off. So here you can get anything from about seven kilowatts up to three hundred and fifty kilowatts. Now it's worth bearing in mind that no car on sale in Britain today can charge at three hundred and fifty kilowatts yet. They will come, but it's kind of future-proofing themselves there. Now you're probably thinking why is it that these different places can charge at different rates? Well a lot of it is all to do with how the places receive their power. So to get your power from the national grid, so let's draw a big pylon, to wherever it is that it needs to go, what they will do is they will use an alternating current. So that would be AC. And basically that allows the electricity from the grid to travel long distances to where it needs to go. 
However, to charge your car, your phone, annoying children's toys, they need direct current. And so what they do is say, if we take a, a mobile phone, for example, so what they'll have inside is they'll have little rectifiers. So when you plug your, your cable in to charge, what will happen in here is it will convert the AC current into a DC current or a direct current. So that then becomes DC and then that can charge the battery in your phone, like so. So when you're charging at home, typically you are relying on the car's inbuilt rectifier. Now these things are very costly and they are not super efficient. So the ones you typically get on cars are very small, hence why you can typically only charge at these rates. If you go to somewhere like a supermarket where they will probably have a limited amount of space to put these chargers, they will have rectifiers within the point itself. So you see these big boxes, they will have those rectifiers in there. And at places like motorway services where they have more space, they can put bigger ones in, which means that they can get these crazy figures here. Now it is worth bearing in mind that if I plugged my car into a 350 kilowatt charger, and yet my car is only rated for 22 kilowatts, it's not going to blow the battery, it's just going to regulate it to 22 kilowatts. So depending on the kind of car you have, there will be a maximum figure that the car can charge to. Um, so yeah, that is the types of charge. Now when it comes to plugs, you will typically have two kinds. You'll either have type two, which is generally circular and you'll have little holes in it like this. So that would be a type two. And then you have something else called CSS, which is basically a type two extended. Big circular points here. Now the great thing about those kind of plugs is it means when you're using a rapid charger, like the ones you find on motorway services, you will use this kind of plug and you will plug it straight into your car. However, if you were say charging at home and you only had a type two, you can plug your type two in to the CCS charger there. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload and feel free to check out the other videos in this series.